Yeah, man. I was downtown Kingston today looking some fruits to complete some juice drink videos I'm doing. When I heard a little man shout, Sprat! Hundred dollar a pound! Because I was so focused on my agenda, I walked past him and then turned back and bought a pound of Sprat. I asked him if it was clean. He said, no, if you want clean ones, walk back down the road and pay $200 a pound. So I said, all right, give me them. So after I made my juice video and was taking a break, some hours later, I decided to start frying my Sprat. I knew I had to clean it. So while cleaning it, it dawned on me that, wow, you know that I should video it. This is where I cut in. Hello, my name is Miguel, and today I'm gonna fry for you herring Sprat. Sprat. Usually when you buy fish downtown, you pay a little extra money and you'll scale it and gut it for you. That's what I usually do. I'll scale and gut my own fish only if I have to. Alright, so do what you see me doing. Start from the tail. Get a paring knife or a trimming knife. A shorter knife than the one that I'm using. Start from the tail. Slightly rub the scale of the fish. Remove scale. So you're gonna go through and scale all of this fish and once we're finished we're gonna gut it next use the knife rub the side of the fish remove the scale rub the head part light slightly you don't want to rub it off too hard no no but just barely rub the knife over the head of the fish the back of the fish go on the other side and scale it as well. The fish is very fragile. It's a small fish. It's Sprat. I hope this is the correct name for it, but it's Sprat, I know it as. And back in the days, people used to walk and say, Herring Sprat! So I don't know if it's Herring Sprat or what. But may I just call it Sprat for now, from now on. Therefore, be patient. Go through, scale each fish. If you're used to it, it shouldn't be a problem. Just take time. When the fish's eyes is as clear as this, that means it's fresh. When it's fogged, that means it's not so fresh. You got to be nimble with your fingers while doing this, but gentle in other words. You gotta handle the fish gently. Put the fish in your left palm and in your right hand use a knife rub the side of the fish gently remove the fish's scale if you tear the fish a little bit don't worry about it but just be mindful you don't want to rip the fish apart before you fry it and while you're scaling the fish hold the fish down you don't want the scale to splash all over the place and on the wall on the plates and cups and all of that stuff it's best if you do this on a newspaper so that you can keep all this muck, all of this mess in one place. By starting from the tail, you're working from beneath the scale so that you can remove it off the fish's flesh. Because if you try doing it the other way, the scale will not come off. So it's very important that you get beneath the scale so that you can remove it effectively and efficiently. This is the last fish. After finished scaling, next we're gonna gutter the sprat fish. The way all this thing was so burdensome, I was so ready to wash. But I just remember I didn't gut the fish yet. So back to the newspaper. This part is messy. It might be disgusting for some. You have a back side and you have a front side on the sprat fish. Look for the front side. Hold the head of the fish down, like where your fingers are. That should be on the right side, which is the right side, not the back side. Right. Use a sharp knife, cut right beneath the belly. One sixteenth of an inch up from, from the, the belly, and just cut from the belly up to the head, right where the gill is. Use the knife, push out the fish's gut. It's best if you do this outside. When you reach up to where the, the gill is, 
hold the knife with the tip of your thumb, grab the fish's gill, and then rip it out. It's a long time I haven't done this, so I'm a bit awkward right now. Once you get the hang of it, you will find a groove. All right, I'm gonna cut this one from the back. You're gonna see how difficult it is to remove the fish's gut. See, look. All right, so I'm just doing it just to show you. So it's best if you put the fish in your left palm, use the knife in your right hand and then cut below the belly. Be mindful, you're using a sharp knife, do not cut too far down and cut yourself. Use the knife, push out the fish's gut. Hold the fish's gill with the tip of the knife using your thumb and your first index finger pull the fish's gill out and throw it away if you are not used to holding the fish in your hand while cutting do it this way get a chopping board put the fish flat on the chopping board make sure the back of the fish is on the chopping board the right side of the fish is upright use a sharp knife cut below the belly of the fish up to the gill right below the head of the fish use the knife and kind of push out the fish's gut once you do that with the knife in your right hand get a hold of the fish's gill and rip it out this method is a safe way to gutter a fish. Ensure that you remove all of the fish's gut. Feces and stuff that's not good for you is in it. So you gotta clean it out properly. Very important. If you don't, when you eat the fish, you might feel bad, like you wanna throw up. If you don't clean the fish properly, you might feel upset, you know, like you wanna throw up after cooking and so forth, if it's not cleaned properly this is labor intense it's not so much labor intense but it's as if you have to be patient now that the fish is scaled and guttered put it in a bowl we're gonna wash it off now we're gonna rinse off the scale and wash out all of this muck so that the fish is clean and pretty before frying pour enough water into the bowl drizzle several drops of distilled white vinegar three maybe four tablespoons of distilled white vinegar you may use lime juice instead use your fingers and rub the side of the fish clean get in between the fish go through and do this for all the fishes Look in between the fish where the feces might be, wash it properly. Use your fingers and rub in between the fish, wash it out properly. Wash it clean. Be mindful that the fish is fragile. You don't want to handle the fish rough. Don't be rough. Be gentle. Go where the head is, where you remove the fish's gill, wash out the blood.
once you do that get a separate bowl ready add more water in the bowl with the fish you may drizzle several more drops of distilled white vinegar however it's optional give fish a final rinse it's best if you do this part on the fresh running water however be mindful that the fish is fragile and you don't want to use the pressure from the water to break up the fish therefore fill the bowl with water first then you add the fish in the water after that you may Put fish in a colander and allow it to drain. If you're in a hurry, do what I'm doing. Grab hold of all the fishes in the water. Use the palm of your hands. Squeeze the school of fishes. Remove excess water. Put it in a separate dry bowl. Be gentle. Next, we're going to season the fish. This is how the sprat fish should look after you cleaned it. Pretty. Drizzle several drops of distilled white vinegar, about two tablespoons. For one pound of sprat, use one tablespoon of salt. I'm using sea salt. Sprinkle the salt all over the fishes. Use your hand and fingers and gently coat the fishes. I am using half scotch bunny pepper. It's optional. Cut pepper. Place it on top fishes. If you're not gonna fry now, Refrigerate it no more than 24 hours. Cover it, put it aside until you're ready to fry. For additional flavors, you may grind half onion on the fish. However, all you need is just salt and vinegar. The onion is optional. If using onion, you don't have to grind it to puree. You can always slice it and then place it on top of the fishes and allow it to marinate for at least half an hour. Put large skillet to heat. Put the stove's gauge on six high. Ensure that the saucepan is dry. If not, do what I'm doing. Use a paper towel, dry the inside of saucepan. Allow a minute between two for the saucepan to get hot. Once you see a little smoke, that's a sign to say it's hot enough. Look, that's what I mean. Add cooking oil. I am using coconut oil. I'm using about a cup of cooking oil. Make sure you're using enough oil for frying. Put paper towel in a plate or a basket. Allow the cooking oil to get hot four minutes between five minutes or until the oil starts to smoke. Lay out the fishes so that you can have easy access to the fish when you're ready for it while adding it to the heating oil. Take each fish and place it in the eating oil. Be mindful that you're dealing with hot oil. Be cautious. Place the fish on its own little spot in the eating oil. You don't want to add too many fish. Add enough fish so that the fish can fry properly. The fish should not be touching. So give it enough space around it, say about a quarter inch place around each fish so that it can fry properly. Allow, let it stay on one side, don't move it. After two, between three minutes, flip fish. Once it starts to brown on the edges, that's a sign to say it's ready and ready to be flipped on the other side. Do what I'm doing. Flip fish. Allow. 
after two minutes between three, remove fish from the heating oil. A total of four between six minutes. Fish fries perfect in six minutes. With the stove's gauge on high, that will not make the fish oily. Once the fish is finished frying, place the fried fish on the paper towel to drain excess oil. And then continue the routine until you finish frying all the fishes. Eat fried sprat with bread, dumpling, some people call it Johnny Cake, or festival. When you go to the beach, fish is delicious with festival. Almost every Jamaican love fried fish and festival. Oh yes, bami. You can also have it with fried bami. Share with us your experience. This is fried herring sprat. Visit JamaicaDinners.com for the recipe. Subscribe, like, and share. You should try frying sprat like I do. Give us feedback when you do. Fried herring sprat fried sprat sprat is delicious when it's fried crispy the flavor of sprat is unique it tastes like no other fish you can eat the entire fish you can eat the head the bone in the middle the fin the tail everything when I am eating a sprat, I just chew off the head, chew the bone, and just throw the entire fish in my mouth and just chew it. That's how I eat sprat. Sometimes if I'm too full, then I'll eat around the bone and I might throw away the head, you know, stuff like that. But if I'm hungry, I yam everything. This is a bonus video because I never planned to do it at all. It's spontaneous. It is very spontaneous. Until next time, bye. Leave a comment. Tell us why you love eating fried sprat. Yeah, man.